Hi everyone, it is an interesting question. I will classify this question as a medium difficulty GMAT problem solving question. Let us say a GMAT 650 to 700 level question, it is an algebra question it's from the topic quadratic algebra. The concept tested is our understanding about the sum and product of the roots of a quadratic equation, right. So, let us get started with the question x square plus bx plus 72 equals 0 has two distinct integer roots, right. The roots are integers which means they are obviously real numbers, their distinct values is what it is saying. How many values are possible for b which is what we need to find out. Let us get started by understanding how do we compute the sum of the roots of a quadratic equation and product of the roots of a quadratic equation. The primary reason being that that would tell us that we will get an idea about the values that b can take given the values about what the product of the roots of the quadratic equation are, right. So, let us get started with that theory. For a generalized form of a quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus c equals 0, let us say it has got two roots r 1 and r 2. Sum of its roots r 1 plus r 2 will be equal to minus b upon a and product of its roots r 1 times r 2 is equal to c upon a. The equation given to us is x square plus b x plus 72. Let us quickly jot down what is a, what is b, what is c in this context. In this context a is equal to 1, b is the same b, no change at all. We are trying to find out how many values can b take and c in our instance is equal to s72. Let us just plug in these values into these two equations. Sum of the roots r1 plus r2 is minus b upon a, b is a b, so this is going to be minus b, a is a 1, so sum of roots is equal to minus b for the given equation product of the roots is r1 times r2 which is c upon a, c in our case is a 72, a is a 1, so r1 times r2 is equal to 72. The question is asking us to find out how many values can b take given the fact that r1 and r2 are distinct integers, that is what it is stating, right. So, r1 plus r2 equals minus b, which means b can be written as minus of r1 plus r2. So, however many values r1 plus r2 can take, so many different values can b take. So, we need to determine what are all the possible values r1 plus r2 can take. So, in a way, if we step before that is, if we can determine the different values that r1 and r2 can take, then we will be able to determine the number of values r1 plus r2 can take. Do we know values that r1 and r2 can take? Yes, in a way, if r1 and r2 are distinct integers and their product is equal to 72, all that we need to do is list down different integer combinations for r1 and r2 which will give a product of 72. Let us do that, compute r1 plus r2 and then evaluate the values that b can take, right. So, b is nothing but minus of r1 plus r2. So, we know that the product of the roots is equal to 72 and r1 and r2 are integers. So, product of two integers should give us a 72. How many such possibilities exist? That is what we are going to be looking at. The easiest thing that comes to my mind is 1 and 72. Quite evidently that both values of r, both values that r1 and r2 will be taking will be values which are factors of 72. So, 1 is a factor of 72, correspondingly the other factor will be a 72. So, r1 plus r2 is a 73, b is equal to minus of r1 plus r2. So, that makes it minus 73. This is one value that b can take. Quickly list down all possible values. 2 is a factor of 72. So, r1 could be a 2 which means correspondingly r2 will be a 36. So, sum is equal to 38, possible value for b is a minus 38. 3 is a factor of 72, correspondingly it is going to be a 24 for r2. So, sum is equal to 27, minus 27 is a possible value for b. 4 is a factor of 72, 18 that makes it 22 and minus 22. 5 is not a factor of 72, 6 is a factor of 72, 6 correspondingly 12, sum is 18, this will make it as minus 18. 7 is not a factor of 72, 8 is a factor correspondingly r2 will be a 9, 17 is the sum minus 17. The idea about writing it this way also because of computing r1 and r2, the moment we come to 8, we know the next factor is a 9. If 9 is a factor, it is going to be 8 and correspondingly all of these have been covered. So, how many different values can we take? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 values, right. So, this looks like all of the values that we can have, but hold on, will the product be a 72 only when r1 and r2 are both positive? or can the product be a 72 with both r1 and r2 being negative as well? That is also a possibility. So, 6 values when r1 and r2 took positive values, we will just list down when they take negative values as well, right. Minus 1 times minus 72, the product is still going to be a 72, r1 times r2 will be a 72. Let us check out whether b gives a different value now. Sum is equal to minus 73, b is negative of this which makes it as minus of minus 73 which is a plus 73. Let us go back to the previous slide. 
previous slide we know the values were all this way right these were the values we had minus 73 minus 38 minus 27 for each of these values there is going to be a corresponding positive value is what we will be getting in this slide when both the roots are negative so minus 73 was there here we have a plus 73 quickly complete this table minus 2 minus 36 product is a plus 72 minus 38 and the value of b is a 38 minus 3 minus 24 minus 27 plus 27 minus 4 minus 18 minus 22 so value of b is a plus 22 minus 6 minus 12 which is a minus 18 value of b is a plus 18 and lastly minus 8 minus 9 makes it as minus 17 as a sum and the value of b being a 17 so we had six values where b took negative values and six values where b is taking a positive value so we have six plus six a total of 12 possible values is what b can take but this question has two layers in terms of getting it right right one understanding the concept right that most of us might get it right but having got all of that right there's a good chance we would not have come into this table at all but it just computed values when both r1 and r2 were positive values if r1 times r2 is equal to a 72 it could happen when both are positive or when both are negative both are positive or both are negative the product will be the same value but the sum is going to be positive in one case sum is going to be negative in another case and therefore corresponding the values of b will be negative and positive respectively so we need to account for both of these things that's what makes this question closer to 700 conceptually probably a 650 level question but many of us might have missed out another bunch of six values that we have to factor in that's what made it a little more difficult pushed it to a 700 level best wishes for your gmat preparation before you leave i want you to do a couple of things right one subscribe to this channel turn on notifications so you get notified every time we come up with a new video second i want you to subscribe to our instagram channel I'm going to be having reason, uh, polls quite often in that channel the visa the handle for it is visaco gmat right please do not miss it visaco gmat is our handle on instagram right best wishes till i see you in the next video